Here we go, back again with another video. Yes, a video on some Sunderland news, some Sunderland memorabilia, and bits and pieces that's going on around the club. But we'll start off today with a big thank you to everybody who's watched the vlog of the weekend. Ria Mondo and Winty on the vlog, absolutely superb. Thank you for watching that vlog, and thank you to everybody. We all know at this moment in time there's going to be an international break this weekend. No Sunderland football this weekend, so there's an international break. So we'll take that moment in time to say thank you everybody who subscribed to all of the years of watching the channel. Much appreciated. Now, people who got the correct score of one's a peach against Luton Town is astronaut Klaas Palea, Trevor Locke, Ian Parker, man of the world, Simo Kip Vader, leader of the, the big book of sea, Chris Wilkins, Brian Greener, Alan Dixon, Haley Jones, Jonathan Mariner, Kian Joy, Michael Atkinson, Justin Eppley, Paul Crampton, Ian Curry, Angelic Skin 77, Kevin Cowell and Nick Abrams all got the correct score and we'll get one point in the big book of C. Well done. SFC Fan TV will be returning. Will be, be, be returning on Thursday night. But news today, yes, Stuart Donald had his first chat about selling a lot of his shares. This is what the gadget has to say. Stuart Donald's first words after reducing Sunderland shares and potentially Eastleigh return. Yes, good luck with Eastleigh. Go and sling your hook. The former Sunderland majority owner still has shares in the club, but it's reduced to 9%. Former Sunderland majority holder Stuart Donald has opened up his heart, not really, has opened up his desire to return to the National League Eastleigh. Yes, get off your pedestal and back down with Eastleigh. Good luck with Eastleigh anyway. After selling more of his shares to Black Cats, in the Black Cats, it, it comes after KLD and Dwan Sartori both increased the shares to 58 and 33 33% respectively. Now, it's not, it's not vodka in there, it's just water. Donald, who has reduced his shares from the club from 19% to 9% claims he has no further intention to sell more of his stake in the club in the short and medium term. The former Black Cats owner says he still loves the club. Ah, oh, poor. Ah, oh, Stuart loves the club. He loves Sunderland. Ah, oh, we all love Sunderland. There we go. We all live in the yellow submarine. The Black Cats owner says he still loves the club. Ah. Oh. And the supporters, is that right? No, he still loves the club and admits he got it wrong in the eyes of the supporters. Well, that's big of you. I'm pleased to see you got it, you got it wrong. With Donald now owning less than 10%, it allows him to take up more, ha more of a hands-on role elsewhere with the co-owner addressing his possible return to Eastleigh. Donald has insisted he's, he, he has no say in the day-to-day -day running of the club. Of course, he hasn't got any bloody say in running the club. 9%, he cannot have much say, surely, in running the club. But what we'll do now, we're going to talk about the players who have gone on international duty. Yes, and well done to these players. As the Skybet Championship comes to a pause, even seven, even seven Sunderland players could potentially be in action for their respective nations over the course of the international break. Anthony Patterson, well done being called up for the under-21s, will be away with the England under-21s for the first time and is hoping to make his appearance, his first appearance for the young three Lions setup. Anthony Patterson deserves that. He really does deserve that. He really does. He's worked his socks off. He's improved from like on loan to Notts County a couple of seasons ago, brought back into the into League One, holding his own, brushing off other keepers to one side and then into the championship proving he has the quality in the championship and has a great season so far Anthony Patterson he's improving all of the time Ahmad who has been selected for the Ivory Coast senior squad and will be looking to add to his three caps while Trey Hume's call up to Northern Ireland squad represents an opportunity to gain further international experience he currently has one cap for his country and has been called up alongside Daniel Ballard. So well done, Trey Hume. Again, you deserve it. You've put the work in. You've done well for Sunderland over the last few months. You know, being plucked out of, you know, from the reserves bench and, and put back in, into the team. And you have very little sort of experience, Trey Hume, you know, come from Ireland. Sort of, I don't know what kind of quality Ireland is, Lingfield. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not up to date with what's going on over there. But, you know, young lad, 
earning his trade, learning his trade, coming through. He's put his foot down. He does really well. One of my favourite players at Sunderland Trade. I, I like him. And Daniel Ballard, fantastic. Come from Arsenal to Sunderland to, to, earn his, to, to learn his trade, earn his trade exactly the same. He could have stayed at Arsenal and stopped on the substitutes, stayed in the under-23s or whatever it was. But no, he come down to the Championship and he's putting in some really good performances. And we probably won't be getting promoted this season. I think that's more or less, you know. It's never over to the fat lady sings, but you never know. And I think one of the players who could possibly live this season is Dan Ballard. Now, it would be nice if Daniel Ballard stayed at Sunderland to next season, but I'm sure there'll be some Premier League clubs sniffing about a Dan Ballard. So, well done, those two. Jusin Benetti has travelled to Costa Rica for the CONCAF Nations League games, while Edward Michu and Adola Barr has been called up for the under-20s French squad. Here is where you can catch the lads in action for the respective nations over the next two weeks. With it. And then at least then it shows you a, a whole host of different games. I think it's um where are we at here? England's under twenties play French under twenties. Wow, that'll be good. England under twenties play French under twenties. Anthony Patterson under twenty ones. So there we have it. Very well done to those people called up in a national duty. I know Tony Mowbray did say in his post manager interview that. The, the, I think the reporter went on to say you'll have plenty of time to, 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 to sort of get your, your squad ready and prepped for Burnley. But a lot of these players won't come back and they'll only have one day to fit into that side. So it's going to be tough for them players coming back. But I wish them all the best. And Burnley, it's a free hit, isn't it? It's a free hit. Burnley away, top of the table. You know, they're running away with the league. Sunderland away there. No one expects Sunderland to go to Burnley and do anything. So it's a free hit. We could go there and we could surprise a few people. Why not? I think we might get a result at Burnley. Now, I want to say a big thank you to Paul Lang. I should have got that right, haven't I? Paul Lang. Of course I've got it right, Paul Lang. I always forget people's names. I'm just useless. Absolutely useless. Yes, Paul Lang. Got in touch and wanted to send me some football memorabilia. And here is the first one. A hundred, there we go. October the 23rd, 1979. A hundred years of Sunderland AFC. You can pause that and have a quick read if you want. The first one. And it's going to be some interesting reads in here. Absolutely interesting reads. I'm looking forward to having a good scroll through that. But then we have... Another one from 1964. Another one from 1964. We're going up. Brown gave his word. There you go. Alan Brown. Alan Brown, manager of Sunderland, stood by a radio in the Southampton's director room yesterday afternoon listening for one result, it came Preston nil, Portsmouth nil. Then he rushed to the dressing room where he tied, where his tired and nervous players were, were changing and called, we're up. There we go. Well done, Sunderland in 1964. And there is the souvenir of 1964. There's the lads. There we go. Souvenir. And in 1957-58, they were relegated. 58, 59, 15th in the league, 59, 60th, 15th in the league, 60, 61, 6th in the league, and there we have it. Have a look at that. And there's some results. I'm going to pause that. I've got a couple of results there. So there's that. Then also we do have, of course, the FA Cup, 5th of May, 1973, Porterfield, the Sunday Net, or... Oh, I'll have a good look at that. Then we have the Wembley Special. April the 23rd. The Wembley Special. There's some interesting photographs in here, I bet. Oh, look, there's a, there's a, there's a young... A young James Bolham. He's a Sunderland fan. A young James Bolham. The likely lads. Young James Bolham. Massive Sunderland fan. Have a look in there. Some of these ones here. There we have Bob Stoke all playing golf. Of 
good action there, Bob. And of course, the lads in the bath. Hey, <laughs> celebrating the victory. And there we have it. Absolutely superb. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers here to another one in the final. There we go. We've got that as well. So we'll put that souvenir back inside there. That's it. And the middle where it belongs. And then of course we do have more photographs of that special day. There we go. What's in the middle? Let's have a look. Just more photographs. So there you go. Thank you, Paul Lang. We'll have a really good read of them. There's the lads getting the trophy. And then I was looking through my drawers <laughs> and I did find this. First game of Lovey Mac Menemies. First game of Lovey Mac Menemies. Big crowd at Roker Park and we did lose that day back in 1985. And funny because there's the first photograph of their sub Hodgson. Warming up with Keeper McDonough, and it's a beautiful sunshine. Then, of course, being by the seaside, the fog rolls in during the game, and that's a wonderful photograph of somebody's head. There we go, somebody's curly head. Interesting photographs. Son and player getting thrown to the ground, and like usual, referee gave no penalty that day. Bloody useless referees. Look at the lovely sunshine there. Gary Bennett in the side. You got lovely sunshine, then you got the fog rolling in back in 1985. So there we go. It's a brief update of what's going on with Sunderland players in international duty and also some memorabilia. But I have another channel called Mads Out and About, and I put a video up yesterday. It was me going around Horden, looking at some £5,000 houses, lots of houses. It's very sad to see the state of affairs in some small villages when the, the pits closed down over the years and how it's been let to just sort of go backwards over the years. You know, the community, the pit was the heart and soul of the community. And when they were closed down, it's deteriorated over the years. Still some wonderful people live in these places, but... There's a video out now on Mads Out and About. Leave a link down below in the description. Another 20, I need 21 more subscribers. Hit the 1,000 subscribers. So if you pop over there, watch the video. If you like that kind of shite, then please subscribe to the channel. It'd be much appreciated. That's Mads Out and About. Link down below in the description. And yes, we'll be doing a video later on in the week. We've got another shirt to unbox. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you to everybody out there watching the videos. You make the videos, not me. I do make the videos, but if it wasn't for you, there'd be no good. So there you go. Thank you. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. And don't forget to subscribe to Mad Out and About. Thank you. And we'll catch you later on the week with more Sunderland news. Bye.